Retirement Tips Radio is brought to you by Business Radio X, the voice of business in your community. Currently serving over 25 markets, the Business Radio X network is growing fast. We're teaming up with retired execs and established entrepreneurs to support and celebrate local business leaders. If you'd like to make additional income while making a difference, discover more at brxteam.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Retirement Tips Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. I got with me today Acacia and Billy Caterly, and they're with RetireEarlyLifestyle.com. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, thanks, Lee, and thank you for having us. Well, before we get too far into things, tell us about Retire Early Lifestyle. How did that come about? Well, it was back in about 1989, and um, we, we were both working careers, and a lot like people who are listening, uh, working our butts off, and uh, it was um, much more than a 40-hour work week for us, as we owned a restaurant, and then I was a stockbroker and branch manager at the time, and it was just like we weren't, uh, we weren't seeing as much of each other as we had hoped for. I was working days and occasionally was working nights and uh, it just became a little bit strenuous on our relationship and so i would seen some magazine um, stories on people who are who retired early and were traveling the world and that piqued our interest and so in 1989 I brought to a case of this idea of us selling everything house cars everything and uh, hitting the road traveling abroad to experience uh, different cultures and so then in 1991, we actually pulled the plug and did it. Now, that was kind of early in the, in the thinking like that, right? Because nowadays, a lot of people, you're seeing a lot of uh, people that are taking that route or at least considering it. But back then, that was unusual, wasn't it? Oh, it was very unusual. There was, it was uh, no path for us to follow. There was nothing internet-wise. Like, there was no social media, no um, email no personal computers, no um, ATMs, hardly, you know, so there was, we just had to kind of wing it. We just did it. It was very unusual for our families and friends. We were kind of on the outside there for a while. So now what was the kind of the response from your family and friends? Were they, were anybody supportive or were they thinking you're crazy? Like what, what they thought you would do this for a minute and then come back to work? Like what was the thinking back then? All of that, all of that. They thought we were crazy. They thought we'd do it for a minute and come back to work. My mom thought I was a bum. I was giving up a perfectly good job, a gorgeous home, a quarter mile from the beach. I had to tell her we weren't going on welfare, that we purchased our freedom, and we wanted to travel the world. And our friends didn't understand it at all. They thought we were going on a long vacation and that we would have to beg to get back into the working world. And of course, the rest is history. We did this in 1991 at the age of 38, and that's almost 30 years ago, and we're still here. Now, were you doing this, did you have some of the um, kind of fears that some people approaching retirement at any age have, like, oh, I'm going to run out of money, or what if there's a health crisis? Like, like how were you kind of mitigating some of that at least perceived risk? Well, because I had some experience in the brokerage business and in the stock market, and we had been investing for years We'd already experienced a couple uh, highs and lows. One was the 1987 stock market crash, where the market fell like 20 plus percent in one day. And so I was pretty confident that that we could make a, a decent return on our money if we just stayed invested and rode these things out. And so that covered the financial part of it. As far as healthcare goes, um, you know, we were 38 years old. And so we were pretty much winging it at that point. And um, so we didn't really concern ourselves at 38 years old with some serious, you know, some serious uh, disease, but, but, you know, you do, things do happen. I mean, we, you know, we've been through a share of uh, emergencies, medical emergencies that we've been able to take care of on the road at a much more reasonable cost than had we stayed in the United States. We really didn't leave much room for failure, Lee. We, it just wasn't in the plan at all. We were just going to, you know, get in there and do it. And, um, you know, no plan B in terms of that. And so, you know, I trusted Billy with the numbers. He's a numbers guy. And, I, you know, I work on the lifestyle. You know, we've worked together before because we had a restaurant together. So 
you know, we knew what teamwork was about and we just didn't, you know, let room for failure enter our minds. Now, regarding the numbers part, did you have a number where you were like, okay, if I have this amount of money, we should be okay. And so you waited till you got that amount of money or you realized, okay, we probably have enough right now. How did that play out? Okay. What we did is we, in, in 1989, a couple of years prior to this, we started tracking our expenses. And this is something that I recommend to everybody do, no matter if you're working or retired. And so we started to see how much we were spending per year on ourselves. So we took all the expenses that we were spending and we subtracted out a house payment, car payments, car insurance, home insurance, dry cleaning, uh, um, meals, meals out, that, that kind of things. And we found that we weren't really spending all that much to maintain our lifestyle. So then what we did is we multiplied that number by 25. And that came to a number that we needed to have invested in the, in that case, the Standard & Poor's 500 index in order to pull 4% out of that per year. Hypothetically, this should last forever. And so, I mean, that's a common, uh, people are using that same 4% today. Um, maybe people have altered it maybe to 3% uh, because people are living longer now and they may not be able to tap into that um, or, or with downturns, especially the ones like we're going through just recently, it has to be able to absorb things like that. So you still feel confident, nothing. So that plan worked and is still working for you today? By far it worked. And, and you know, we, we did the 4% rule way before the 4% rule was invented. And, and so, um, yeah, we've got a higher net worth today than we do when we started by far after inflation and spending. And so, yeah, it's worked out fine. Now, now we don't spend 4%, um, but we could. I mean, we, we, I think one year we went over uh, 4%, but um, normally we just, you know, we, we live a pretty nice lifestyle and um, we spend what we want. We're not miserly in that regard, but um, no, we, we're doing good. Now, uh, at what point did the blog come into play? In 2005, what had happened was, we were, um, you know, just traveling. We meet many, many people, and and we were kept getting the same questions over and over. And how did you do it? What were you trust fund babies? Did you rob a bank? Just, just the same constant bombardment of questions. What do you do about healthcare? That's the biggie. And so I told told Acacia, I said, I think we need to write a book. And you know, neither of us had been published authors prior, and so we knew that a publisher wouldn't touch us. So we had to create a the website in order to sell a book. And so 15 years after we retired in 2005, we created the website. And then that became kind of a vehicle to start building community um, and then sharing your knowledge. Very much so. Yes. It's been a, it's been a wonderful uh, connection with people. We really love, we considered our, our uh, volunteer time and we really love to help people think outside the box and take the life that they're living now and maybe make it more to their liking. There's so many options that a lot of people don't see that they have. So it's been a great joy for us. And, you know, at this point now, we've got close to 10 books. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a real good back and forth. There, you know, it, what it's done is it's opened up uh, to be able to meet people that have, number one, purchased our book, number two, follow us for years, and, you know, and we meet them in distant locations. And uh, that's really opened up the world to us. Yeah, there's no one size fits all when it comes to retirement. So it's, it's very interesting, very exciting to be able to meet other people with different challenges or more money, less money and help them out. Now, um, is there any, has there, like, like part of your services, you mentor people, I guess, going through the retirement or considering retirement. Is that right? You have a mentoring program? Yes, yes, that is. Uh huh. We um, ha have individual phone calls. We answer their emails first at the top of the list. They can ask us anything. We can ask personal questions with them. With the mentors program, I can get a lot more uh, uh, detailed into their finances as compared to just answering general questions to people. Because uh, in the brokerage business, there's a rule. It's called Rule 405, and that is know your client. And so if people just ask me, well, where should I invest or what should I do with this money or that money? I can't really answer them other than in a general manner unless unless they become a mentor, because then I can dig into the, the nuts and bolts and learn how much risk tolerance they have, what other sort of assets they've got, you know, what their plan in general is, and 
stuff like that. Now, um, what is typically the driver for people who retire early? Is it um, they're just frustrated with it seems like this isn't why I was put on this planet, that, um, you know, life has to be more than that? Or is it something? Well, for us, it. Go ahead. Oh, excuse me, Lee. For us, it was freedom. We wanted our own lives. We wanted to call the shots. I think a lot of people who do um, retire early, they want their lives back. And sure, some people. Um, don't like their jobs and we don't recommend that we you know not running away from your job but rather run towards your dream and for us the number one thing was freedom we wanted our lives we wanted to come and go we wanted to see places meet people learn new things you know we wanted to live our lives we our life is like the national geographic magazine i mean we lived we've been up in the hill countries in thailand um native people venezuela before it was closed off all through the caribbean islands sail on sailboats um, it's just been a fabulous experience and we're, we're just getting going here. Now, when you're doing that kind of traveling, is this something that, uh, you just pick a country and then just show up and you go, okay, let's figure this out. Or how much planning are you planners or are you kind of, uh, improvisers? Improvisers. We, we do a little bit of planning to get us on the ground, get a hotel, and then we go from there. And one other thing is like, if we go to Asia, We don't fly straight from Asia to Africa and then Africa to South America and South America to Canada. If we go to Asia, we, you know, we see Bali and um, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, you know, all the places in uh, Cambodia, all Vietnam, you know, we we work in that area of the world and that way it, it, um, helps us in terms of of airplane trips and that kind of stuff. Or like if we're in the Caribbean, we'd go to Latin America, you know, Guatemala, Mexico, Panama, and that kind of stuff. So we we utilize the area of the the world where we're in and then uh, look at all those countries there. It's more of kind of meandering rather than just going like from like point A to point B. Now, um, absolutely meandering because we, we could be in a place and, you know, the best source of information is other travelers and you meet them at coffee shops and in old cantinas or whatever. And some guy will say, well, have you been here yet? No. Oh, you got to go. Yeah, and it's so, a lifestyle more than a vacation. Yes. It's the way we live our lives. So we're not, you know, we're not looking to blow a bunch of money on hotel rooms and big dinners. And all. we did that when we were young and working. And so we really focus on the local people and getting involved in the community, doing volunteer work and that sort of thing. And, and uh, we like it. We like the people. We do meanderly. I mean, so we could stay a week in some place or we could stay a month. It's just kind of. Or years. We've done that. <laughs> so how do you decide? How do you decide? Like, what's a trigger? Like, you know what, let's move on or hey, you know what, let's kind of invest some time here. Sometimes it's it's uh, the deals that are on the airlines. I know things have changed right now, but back back when we were all free to travel, it could be a deal on an airline. It could be like, well, you know, we've done everything we want to do in Asia for now. You know, like we were there for like eight years, you know what I'm saying? Um, off and on. And so and then we do, would do a Latin America that we might do Europe or something. So like, it could just be, we want different food. We want different uh, indigenous people. We want a different perspective. Yeah. We're pretty much foodies. And so like right now, well, we were, we were hoping to be in, in, in Italy right now. And uh, you know, obviously that didn't work out. Olives, cheese, and olive so, oil, yeah, fish. You know, the wine, the cheese, the meats we're in. So now uh, still in a restaurant, you know, that's right. So you, you know, the good stuff. Um, where are you now? We're in Chapala, Mexico, which is on the largest lake in Mexico called Lake Chapala, which happens to be the largest expat community in the world. Now, was that it's by design? Place. That's by design. Is that like a home base for you or do you have a home base? Well, this is one of our home bases here. We have one in Panajachel, Guatemala on Lake Atitlan and one in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand, which is in Northern Thailand, and also in uh, Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon, Vietnam. And then when you have a home base, is that, do you own property or that's just a place you like to no, kind of go back to? No, it's just a place we like to go back to. What we normally do is leave leave like a couple boxes of things. We store them either with a friend or in a hotel um, storage place. Nothing real important, you no. know. But so that when we come back again, we can kind of, you know, not have to repurchase all the things we already bought. And then um, I would imagine you have friends all over the world now. We Mm -hmm. are so fortunate. Yes, Yes, we do. do. Is that part of the secret sauce? Uh, 
having friends all over the world, that opens up more doors, I would imagine. Yes. Tremendous opportunities, and you yes. never know who, who they know or where it's going to come from. It just, uh, it's been, yeah, pretty fascinating. Now, um, what was your first trip? Like, how did you create that escape velocity when you started? Where, where did you aim uh, the journey first? We went to Nevis in the West Indies, Nevis St. Kitts Federation. It's a 36 square mile island in the Caribbean. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And we spent six months there. I wanted to go someplace that I'd hit a wall so I wouldn't be tempted to get into anything. And Nevis is so slow that if you want a hamburger today, you had better ordered it yesterday. <laughs> and so it's just really the land of uh, OK yeah. Mon. <laughs> Now, um, for you, the traveling has opened up a lot of doors and, and maybe expanded your mind of what the world can be. Is there any advice you give to people retiring um, who maybe don't think that they should travel or is travel just part of this, that, that in order to pull this off, it helps to have that kind of wanderlust? Oh, not necessarily. Um, I think the thing that makes the magic sauce or the thing that makes this work is tracking your spending. When you know how much you're spending, then you can you can monitor and um, work out how much money you need to, to spend to live in a year. And the largest thing of that spending is your housing. So like, you know, if you can um, uh, monitor your housing expenses, you can live anywhere in the world. And flexibility is a big key, Lee, especially um, as you age, well, anytime, if you're going to do this, if you're going to pull up, you know, pull the rope, um, early, you need to remain flexible. And, and so you just like this virus thing came out, you know, and who predicted this, you know, who predicted this, the 2007, 2008, uh, great recession or whatever, whatever they're calling it. Um, you, so you just have to be able to kind of flow with the, go with the flow and, uh, make the best of it though. Mm -hmm. Now, can you talk a little bit about, um, what it's like getting health care in these other countries. Uh, that might be a fear for some folks. Um, can you allay some fears when it comes to that? Sure. One of the things uh, we realized pretty much right away is that the cost outside of the U.S. is far more reasonable. Um, it's a whole different type of system. We pay cash out of pocket for most things. You, there are insurance companies, insurance policies, I mean, that you can purchase international and it's underwritten by international companies and so on. But we have found that we just pay out of pocket. We've had everything done from emergency surgery, colonoscopies, eye exams, full physicals, uh, teeth implants, everything purchased out of pocket. It is just so affordable. And uh, there's no reason really to be afraid of the cost. We have some uh, friends who is a uh, medical concierge in Guatemala, and she helps people with like stem cell surgery and um, cancer surgery and hip replacements and all that kind of stuff. And all of those are a lot more affordable outside of the U.S. And the ease of access. It's like if I if I need to go to a doctor, if I'm starting to feel ill and I want to go to a doctor, I just go to a doctor. I don't need I don't need to call them up and, and get it doesn't have to be in our network. I don't need a referral. And the same goes with specialists. If I want to go see a cardiologist, I could go see the one today, probably still if there's if he's around. Um, it's so much easier in common sense. It's the way the U.S. used to be in the 50s, I'm guessing. Um, and if, if I need a, a, a refill of a drug that they prescribe, I just go to the pharmacy and get it. I don't need a script. For 99% for of the things, there's no script necessary. Now, um, what do you travel with? Like, what's your luggage situation look like? Is this a backpack or you have actual luggage? How do you kind of get around and travel, you know, on a regular basis? Well, in the old days, we used to carry everything with us. We'd have a Kelty backpack and a Rolly and then like a day pack, right? And we'd be gone for a year or longer at a time um, traveling on the road. And we'd have to carry, uh, you know, summer clothes and beach clothes along with hiking clothes and heavy boots and sweaters and stuff like that. And then as, you know, as time went on, we just decided like, um, let's just do one climate area at a time. So now we're not carrying as much. And now we're on like day packs, pretty much day packs. Because of the luggage thing as well, you know, they started charging for extra bags and things. And that was, we just said, okay, we'll just eliminate the bag. Right. And the less baggage you carry, then the faster easier. you get through the airport, yeah. first in line in immigration. Hop on a bus, yeah. get in a taxi, everything. 
So now, uh, what has kind of surprised you when you have been doing since you've been doing this lifestyle? Anything that uh, you didn't expect to happen or expect to enjoy that you do? Well, we really uh, were happy that we did it when we were young. We just really couldn't believe how much this lifestyle fit who we are in terms of, you know, calling our own shots, the freedom it, it gives us, you know, if we get stuck in a bad weather pattern, we just leave, you know, or if we happen to like it, we'll stay and set up camp. I mean, figuratively get involved in the community. Billy built tennis courts for the locals here in Mexico. And I've taught English as a second language, you know, so like, if it, it's like we're in charge and we really, we we're self-employed. That's what happened before we, we did this. So we're very self-motivated and this lifestyle suits us perfectly. Now, do you think that um, anyone can pull this off or do they have to have some, some big pile of money to tap into in order to really get the most out of it? Well, if they, if they follow what I said earlier about tracking their spending and finding out what they're actually spending on themselves, then come up with a net worth that they need to have invested then yes, they, assuming they're they're physically able and uh, and have a desire for excitement and, and adventure, um, I think sure there's no reason not to. We know people who are living on their social security check, eight hundred, a thousand dollars a month. We know other people that are multimillionaires, you know, who go scuba diving all over the world and so on. And that's not a cheap hobby, right? So like you can tailor it to your finances or to your desires. Some people don't want to travel. They want to stay put, make a community, you know, no Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they play tennis or whatever, you know, you can do this so long as you know what you're spending and you modify your housing, you don't have to always be on the road. Now, you don't uh, have to have a lot of money. Now, in your community that you've built at retireearlylifestyle.com, um, so those people can go to that website, they can tap in and ask you questions. Um, there's tons of information there. You answer lots of questions on the site, but then they can also take it to the next level and you can help them maybe build out a plan to help them kind of execute this as they move forward. 100% affirmative, yes. That's our, that's our goal is to try to get everybody financially independent. Once you're financially independent, then a government can't uh, threaten to take away your social security or, or threaten this or threaten that. You're on your own. This is the best thing we think anybody can do for themselves and, and the world is to be financially independent. And that way, you know, you're not dependent on anybody and nobody can make your life heck. You know what I mean? Now we have a free newsletter. Oh, sorry. We have a free newsletter and a book store and the mentor program and our email. So like people can um, write to us and we answer all the email. Now, now the people that um, should come and to the website and check this out, they don't have to be like a day away from retiring. I would imagine that the earlier they start, they can start putting a plan in place. They can work towards this. Well, Very not true. only that, excuse me, but not only that, but you know, sometimes things happen like you lose your job. Oh, well, maybe I should retire now. Or you lose a spouse or you get a health scare and you say, well, I was really 10 years out. But now that now that this has happened, what do you think is the best way I can move forward from here? You know, we get people that are in their 20s and 30s. We get people that have had life uh, happenings happen to them and they don't know how to what's next. You know what I'm saying? And then we have the planner. So anybody can come to us. We, we really enjoy all the different combinations. Well, congratulations on all your success. It's really an inspiring story and you make it seem so easy and fun. I mean, you really are. Well, you know, we focus on fun and flexibility <laughs> yeah. and it, things are a lot easier when you see options. And that's what we try to emphasize at Retire Early Lifestyle is the options you have available to you. You know, it even is. with this COVID thing, I mean, here in Mexico, we, you know, we've been through it and, and we've gone through these shutdowns and whatever, but but uh, we've made the best of it. We've tried to make the best of what we could do here while we were here. And um, uh, in fact, I can give you a quick story. When this first happened, I was in Guatemala and Acacia was here and they closed the Guatemalan airport down and they closed the borders down. Well, I'm in, I'm in Panahashel, Guatemala with another guy for, and it's his first trip. And he's looking at me like, well, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to get the heck out of here is what we're going to do. <laughs> but the border's closed. I said, don't worry about it. You know, hit the ATM a couple of times. And let's have plenty of cash on us. And we're going to get out of here. Well, that's exactly what we did. We hired a, 
a driver and he got us to a certain point. And then from there we took anything moving and we finally got to the border and, you know, I got back here to Acacia. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it sounds like you two are getting along famously and um, really enjoying the journey. So congratulations on that. That's quite an achievement as well. Thank Thank you very much. We appreciate that, Lee. And uh, one more time, why don't you share the website? Uh, There's so much information there. It's so much good stuff. And just to follow your adventures is fun. Yeah, it's retireearlylifestyle.com, retireearlylifestyle.com, all one word. And uh, sure, people can write us and sign up for the free newsletter. Um, Ask us anything. We answer everybody one way or another. It might be a day or two, but we'll get to it. And um, yeah, come aboard. All right. Well, thank you both. And congratulations again. We appreciate you. It's such an inspiring story. Uh, thank you for taking part of the show today. Thanks, thank you Lee. We much, hope to Lee. see you on the road less traveled. All right. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Lee. Okay. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Retirement Tips Radio. Retirement Tips Radio is brought to you by... Business Radio X, the voice of business in your community. Currently serving over 25 markets, the Business Radio X network is growing fast. We're teaming up with retired execs and established entrepreneurs to support and celebrate local business leaders. If you'd like to make additional income while making a difference, discover more at brxteam.com.